I want to ask you a very simplistic question, <laughs> but it's it's something that evades everybody. How does one manage to find happiness? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> really simple question. But no one today is happy. <laughs> Where do you see that? Yeah, <laughs> do I look unhappy? You don't. <laughs> so many people around us are just not, or they're not be able to be happy for other people, or just with what they have necessarily. They're always looking for the next next goal, purpose, something. Um, it could be material vindication, it could be exp experiential, anything. One simple thing is, every human experience has mm. a chemical basis to it. Okay. What you call as peace is one kind of chemistry, what you call as happiness or joy is another kind of chemistry, ecstasy is one kind of chemistry, agony is another kind of chemistry, anxiety another kind of chemistry, yeah. stress another kind of chemistry. All levels of pleasantness and unpleasantness is rooted in a certain chemical background within you. Okay. Or in other words, what you call as this is a certain chemical soup. Okay. The question is only, are you a great soup or a lousy soup? Okay <laughs> <laughs> Now, if I give soup making ingredients to ten different people, mm. the same ingredients, Ten people will not produce the same soup. True. Ten soups will taste in ten different ways. Though the ingredients are same, similarly all of us are made with the same ingredients. Right. But see in how many different ways we made ourselves. So it's time to pay attention to soup making, <laughs> that this is a great soup, this is not a lousy soup. <laughs> right. okay. If you establish a chemistry of blissfulness, right. that's how you will be. This is what we are teaching people. We are not advising people to be happy or peaceful, mm. we are teaching them how to engineer your chemistry the way you want it. Okay. You create a chemistry of blissfulness, mm. then why are you bothered about being happy? Mm. That's how it'll be. In fact, Sadhguru, you've in fact created an organization where there is a lot of… I mean, people are volunteering, uh, they're happy, <laughs> there's, a, there's a very positive uh, vibe and culture. Uh, for instance, how have you managed to create uh, such an organization? The wonderful people around me. <laughs> Wherever I go, whichever <laughs> part of the world I am in, not a single day passes for me right. without witnessing tears of joy and love around me. Every day, somebody will be shedding tears of love mm. and joy. I don't think there's a better way to live in this world <laughs> And all of us should strive to create our own circles of joyfulness and mm. pleasantness around us. Because if you are not joyful by your own nature, if you are always ha going around with the fear of suffering, as long as fear of suffering is there within you, you will never walk your life with full stride. It will always be half a step. Mm. Most human beings have crippled themselves simply because of fear of suffering. What will happen to me is yeah. always the question. Whatever happens, this is how I will be. If this assurance comes to you, only now you will want to scale the peaks of life and see what about it. If it happens, makes no difference to you. If it doesn't happen, makes no difference to you. That's when you would like to really explore every dimension of life. So first and foremost thing is this, that your way of being is not determined by what's around you. If you bring this one aspect to you, there is no fear of suffering. Once there is no fear of suffering, you will traverse the breadth and length of this life right. without hesitation.